In this video, we're going to learn about the different forms of water. Water. This is something that we see all around us. We see it at the beach, when it rains, and even in our taps. But have you noticed how water is there everywhere around you, but yet it sometimes looks different? To understand this, let's do a very simple experiment. And this is going to be something that you can do even at home. Now let's say that I take about 50 ml of water and I'm going to pour that same 50 ml of water into each of these three glasses and glass bowls that I have. So first up, let me pour this into bowl no glass number one. Now notice that as I pour it into glass number one, it kind of takes up the shape of the glass, right? Now let me take the same water and pour it into glass number two. Now, as I pour it into the second glass, it ends up taking the shape of the second glass. And now from this, when I pour it onto the bowl, we see that the water takes up the shape of the bowl as well. I'm really sorry about the spillage there. Now, notice how this particular form of water that we see is not really having a fixed shape, but rather is taking up the shape of the bowl that we're putting it in. This form that we see right here is called as the liquid form. And in nature, you see water as liquid everywhere. In our oceans, rivers, in the lakes, and even in the groundwater. This is the form that we drink, we swim in, we bathe, and we use every day. But why are we calling this as the liquid form? To understand that, we need to go on a journey and look at water closely. And to do that, I'm going to take this particular glass of water and look closely at the particles that make up water. Now, I'm not going to go all scientific on you and give you technical terms, but let's just think about it as small, tiny, tiny structures that make up water. Now, what I want you to focus is on how these particles are arranged. So let's say if each circle here represents a particle of water, then notice how all of these particles are arranged. Are they very tightly packed? No, right? But rather they are slightly loosely packed. And as a matter of fact, at room temperature, these particles also have, have the ability to move around a little bit. So effectively, we see here that the particles are loosely arranged and there is space that exists between these particles. So as a result of which, we see that this particular form, which we call as a liquid form, tends to have no fixed shape and it ends up taking the shape of the container it is put in. But at the same time, it would tend to have a fixed volume. So if I started out with 50 ml of water and I poured it into 50 different bowls, the volume would be the same. Provided I don't spill and, you know, I accurately put it back inside. It's a given a lot of other criteria, but you get the gist of it, right? Now, this particular liquid form is not just seen in water. Milk, juice, oil are all other examples. So now I hope you've understood the liquid form of water clearly. Now, let's go ahead with this experiment a little further and pour water into an ice tray. Now I'm going to take the same water and I'm going to fill up an ice tray and I'm going to get a couple of ice cubes from this. So for this, I'm going to take this tray, put it in the freezer and let it rest for some time. Now when I take it out, notice how my water has become, it's no longer free flowing, but rather it has become rigid and hard. And as I keep transferring it from one bowl to the next, notice how the shape doesn't change, but rather it remains the same. Now, this form of water is what we call as the solid form, wherein often we know this solid form as ice. So, if you keep it in the freezer, where the temperature is below 0 degrees, up to let's say minus 2 or maybe minus 3, you would notice that the same particles of water have changed their arrangement, where now they are arranged very close to each other or they are tightly packed. And along with that, the spaces have reduced considerably. As a result of which, we see that it ends up getting a fixed shape and a fixed volume. 
But why does water become ice when kept at low temperatures? Now notice that in the freezer, the temperature reduces, right? Or the temperature drops and goes all the way to maybe, maybe minus 2, minus 3 degrees. Now inside the freezer, when it keeps getting colder and colder, what effectively happens is that the temperature or the heat, right? The heat from these particles will start to move away, right? Or they start to lose the heat. And as a result of which, whatever energy is there, the energy also starts to go. So the particles that were earlier slightly moving around at room temperature no longer have the energy at minus 2, minus 3 degrees which is why they start to lock themselves up into fixed positions. And as a result of which, they end up forming a solid structure called as ice. So effectively, water becomes ice when the temperature reduces. And this is very, very crucial to understand. So that is when we get the solid form of water. So now we have seen two forms. We have seen the solid as well as the liquid form. Now let's go to the final form, which is the gaseous form. And for this, when we are carrying out this experiment, please, if you do want to try this out, do, that, do this with parental advisory. So now here I have kept a little bit of water on the stove and as you notice, it starts to boil. Now eventually you notice that these fumes start to come out, right? Now these fumes that we see is nothing but steam or what we commonly call as steam but there's another name to this and this is what we call as water vapor and effectively in this particular form we see here that on heating or on increasing the temperature we notice that the particles start to move far far away right? So as you notice, they are far apart from each other and this happens upon heating. So when the liquid form is subjected to an increase in temperature, it gets converted to the gaseous form, which is water vapor. Now where else can I find water vapor? Well, water vapor is there all around us. It's just that we can't see it. For example, when you wash clothes and you keep wet clothes for drying, water just doesn't disappear, but rather it gets converted into invisible water vapor and it floats away. But more on that later. But for now, I hope that you've had a brief understanding about the three forms. So quickly to conclude, we know that water is the liquid form of it. But on cooling it, you notice that it becomes ice. And on heating it, it becomes water vapor. But when water vapor gets cooled, right? So when you cool water vapor, it becomes liquid water. And when you cool water, it becomes ice. So effectively, temperature has a crucial role to play in all of this.